What's going on YouTube, GFN right here. So in today's video, I have some important jailbreak clarifications about iOS 15.2 and lower. So as you probably remember, yesterday I made a video about iOS 15.2 and iPadOS 15.2, which were released yesterday and they contain a lot of kernel patches and of course, a lot of vulnerability patches by Apple. And of course, many of these can be used for jailbreak purposes, including those by Pangu and of course, Google Project Zero and so on. Now, as a quick recap, we got one of these vulnerabilities announced that it will be released in two months. A complete kernel vulnerability that was demonstrated and can be used to update Uncover or even Taurine. That's where yesterday's video stopped. So I got some questions from you in the comment section, so we're going to address them today. The first question was, what do I do if my device has 15.1.1? Now, the reason I forgot to talk about that in the previous video is because I have shown the signed iOS versions for iPhone 11. Now, if you go ahead in here and select, for example, iPhone 13 or 12 Pro, it's a completely different animal because this one also has iOS 15.1.1 which is currently signed while the others here have 15.1 so as you can see from here and no 15.1.1 in sight at the same time if you go here on 12 or 13 you can see that the 15.1 is no longer signed in there so to clarify the things if your device has 15.1.1 and is currently signed it's as good as 15.1 while there are some changes between 15.1 and 15.1.1 it's still a good iOS version to be on if you're waiting for any of these vulnerabilities here because these were patched in 15.2. So no matter what device you have, all of them have 15.2. This is the version that patches those vulnerabilities, not 15.1.1. So yes, even on 15.1.1, you should be safe. Now, in my previous video, I said that you should use a blob saver like this one by Air Squared, which works on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS in order to save your iOS 15.1 blobs for the future. That would allow you to upgrade and downgrade freely when a jailbreak is available. And of course, if your device doesn't have 15.1 signed, you can save those for 15.1.1. It would still work and it would still be good. Of course, there aren't many changes between 15.1 to 15.1.1 and it doesn't affect that vulnerability that will be released in two months. So definitely save your blobs for that. Now, another question I got was, aside from Uncover and Torin being able to get updated with that vulnerability, will we able to get CheckRain updated as well? Well, the answer here is no, not with this vulnerability. In fact, none of the vulnerabilities here can actually work for CheckRain. They would if they wanted to change their whole model, but CheckRain doesn't need any of those. Technically, for CheckRain, all you need is basically CheckRain itself. The boot from exploit is already enough on the devices that are supported. You don't need a kernel exploit like these in here, as we need for Uncover or Taurine. That's not even the problem with CheckRain. The problem with CheckRain is the new rootfs that is completely sealed on iOS 15 and that needs to be addressed. CheckRain needs to be updated in order to fix that problem, not a lack of kernel exploit like Uncover has. Now, will Uncover have the same problem with the sealed rootfs after we get a kernel exploit? The answer is yes. Both Uncover and Torin will have to deal with that as well and also CheckRain has to deal with that. That's why to the question what iOS version should I stay on now that you announced a lot of vulnerabilities, my answer was in the comment section that you should stay below 15.0 if possible. So 14.8, 14.7.1, 14.7, 14.6, .7, those do not have that problem. They already work with CheckRain because they don't have that problem and they will work straight away with Uncover and Taurine like 14.5.1 did when a kernel exploit was out. For 15.0 and up, that's a whole different thing. Even with a kernel exploit, we would still need a patch for that sealed root FS, which can take a little bit more time. That's why my answer to the question what version should I stay on is below 15.0 if you can, and if you can't, below 15.2. 15.2 is absolutely worst because none of these vulnerabilities here would work there. But yeah, 15.1.1 and lower should be okay, although, of course, the lower the better. So, yeah, thank you for watching. I am GS now. Till the next time, subscribe to stay updated and peace out.